Hello friends, welcome to GT Science Tutorial. In this video, I'm going to explain about the Oswald's Dilution Law. This law is very important in ionic equilibrium chapter. In my previous video, I have already explained about the Arrhenius theory of ionization and its postulates. And in this video, we'll see the derivation of this Oswald's Dilution Law. So let's start. Arrhenius theory of ionization assumes a dynamic equilibrium between the ions and the unionized molecules. The meaning of this line is, suppose we have an electrolyte AB and we put it in water or any other polar solvent where it gets broken. Then it will give A plus plus B minus, A plus and B minus. These are the ionized form and this AB is the molecular form. Now, here this is the reactant, uh, sorry, this is the electrolyte and it is giving the ions. <clears throat> now, what happens? These ions will also recombine to give this electrolyte again. That means this is not only a forward reaction, but this is also a backward reaction. So, at a particular situation, at a particular condition, the rate of forward reaction and the backward reaction are same. That is called the dynamic equilibrium condition. Now let's move forward. As a result of that, the law of mass action can be applied there. This application was first carried out by Oswald in 1888. In 1888, as a result of that, this law is called the Oswald's dilution law. Now let's see the mathematical calculation or mathematical portion of this Oswald's dilution law. So suppose there is one gram of this AB molecule. Let me write it. Let us consider, let us consider one gram molecule, one gram molecule of AB, this is the binary electrolyte, <coughs> is dissolved, is dissolved in B liters, B liters of water or the solvent okay then let me write the reaction a b will give a plus and b minus and there is water over here or any other polar solvent <coughs> now at initial condition let me write it in this part Initially, the fraction of AB in the solvent will be 1. Fraction means the part of AB will be 1. And during that time, there, will, there won't be any A plus and B minus form. So, fractions of A plus and B minus in the solution will be 0 and 0. Right. Now let me change the color for another part. Okay. So, and at equilibrium, at equilibrium, that means after certain time, the the reaction will attain equilibrium. So at equilibrium, the fraction of A plus and B minus formed will be alpha and alpha. This is called degree of ionization. That means AB will get broken and some part, the part of it get that gets broken converts to A plus and B minus, right? The number of moles are same. So we are writing alpha and alpha. That means the alpha part of AB is already broken. Now, what is the remaining part of AB there? That means 1 minus alpha. This is the remaining part or remaining extent of the molecule in the solvent. And this A plus and B minus have alpha and alpha extent of this, these ions remaining in the solvent right now. Now, uh, the active masses of now, the active active masses of a plus b minus and a b are the active mass of a b will be equal to the fraction remaining divided by the volume this is the formula to calculate the active mass similarly the active mass of a plus will be alpha by alpha by b and that of b minus will be alpha by 
v right <clears throat> now we need to apply the law of mass action over here so applying applying the law of mass action applying the law of mass action the rate of ionization will be the rate of ionization will be proportional to the extent of this molecule that is uh, 1 minus alpha by b that is active mass so rate of ionization will is directly proportional to the active mass of that particular compound okay if we remove this proportionality sign we need to put equal to and we need to put a constant over here that is q1 so 1 minus alpha by b this is equation number one this is rate of ionization okay you need to remember this similarly the rate of combination the rate of combination will depend on the extent of ions that is proportional to the active masses of the ions so it will be alpha by b into alpha by b right and if we remove this proportionality sign we need to put equal to and we need to put a constant over here so it will be alpha square by b square this is equation number two and at equilibrium let me change the color of this pane uh, so at equilibrium at equilibrium the rate of ionization and rate of combination will be same right so equation one and equation two will be same let us put the conditions over here let us put the values over here k1 into 1 minus alpha by b is equal to k2 into uh, alpha square by b square right alpha square by b square okay so or if we put sorry if we bring this k2 to left hand side and this whole value to right hand side will get alpha square by b square by 1 minus alpha by b this b and this b will get cancelled out it will be k1 by k2 is equal to alpha square by 1 minus b 1 minus alpha into b 1 minus alpha this is alpha okay this b will come over here now this is k1 and this is k2 they both are constants and we can replace them by another constant that is kc will be equal to alpha square by 1 minus alpha into b here this k1 and k2 are the are the velocity velocity are the velocity constants k1 and k2 are the velocity constant and this kc is the uh, ionization constant ionization constant kc is also called dissociation constant this formula this equation number three this equation number three is the required and required formula for Ortswald's dilution law so in examination if the question is uh, derive the expression for Ortswald's dilution law you need to do till this equation number three I hope you understood this properly now there are two conditions or there are two cases there are two cases that we need to talk about case one and case two in case one we take a weak electrolyte a weak electrolyte so if we take a weak electrolyte the value of alpha will be nearly equal to zero why see let me explain this with an example there is this water in a container and we are putting a weak electrolyte that breaks to a very low less ex extent okay so suppose this is that electrolyte if we put it over here only a few portion of it only a few portion of it will get broken out that is less than five percent so for calculation purpose we can consider it to be zero then kc will be equal to alpha square by this if alpha is equal to zero then one minus alpha will be obviously one because we can consider this alpha is equal to zero now if we consider this alpha to be zero then this whole value will be zero that is not possible so that alpha which is getting divided which in getting subtracted we can neglect that okay so it will be kc is equal to alpha square by v 
or let's find out the value of alpha e square alpha e square will be equal to kc into v we now know that kc is the constant right so if we remove this constant we need to replace this equal to sign by we need to replace this equal to sign by this proportionality sign this is the proportionality sign okay and this is the degree of ionization this will be equal to v therefore alpha e square alpha is proportional to v what does this condition says? This condition says that the degree of ionization is directly proportional to the square root of the volume of the solvent for weak electrolyte. If we are talking about weak electrolyte, the degree of ionization, the degree of ionization depends directly upon the volume of the solvent. If the volume of the solvent, if volume rises, then alpha will also rise. This is the condition. Similarly, for second condition, for second condition that is case 2, for case 2, let me change the color of the tip. Okay, for case 2, we consider strong electrolyte. Strong electrolyte. Now, for strong electrolyte, the value of alpha will be very high, nearly equal to 1 but not exactly equal to 1. So we cannot consider the effect of alpha to be 0. We cannot neglect it. So the value of Kc will be alpha square by 1 minus alpha into V. Right? This is the formula. This is the formula to calculate the value of Kc. Now if we cannot remove this, if we cannot neglect this alpha, then we need to solve this and we get Kc into 1 minus alpha B is equal to alpha square or kc minus kc v this b will multiply this one and that will multiply this kc and kc into alpha into v into alpha into v is equal to alpha square or if we take both of these terms to other side it will be alpha square plus kc into alpha into v minus kc into v is equal to zero now you can see over here this is a quadratic equation right this is a okay this is a quadratic equation this is a quadratic equation uh, and this entirely depends on alpha now to get the value of alpha we need the value of this kc and this v so we can calculate the value of kc and v experimentally and we can put those values in this expression in this expression to get the value of alpha in this case we'll get two values of alpha this is uh, a quadratic equation so this is the complete derivation and the cases of oswald's dilution law i hope you understood everything about this video if you like the video please share this video as much as you can and thank you for watching the video